Hello there, boys and girls. Welcome to Tuesday's story time. So sorry that we missed you for Monday's story time. Uh, not that you're interested in hearing my excuses, but in my defense, I could not find Fluffy yesterday. Nope. Um, and I knew better than to show up to story time without him because based on the YouTube stats, uh, half of you only watch the fluffy portion of story time anyways. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Um, anyways, uh, searched this place high and low, could not find him, and it wasn't until very late at night, almost midnight, that it dawned on me that Fluffy joined my little friends outside yesterday afternoon. So I found him just chilling on the patio furniture in the backyard. Um, like a real rascal. So he is back today. Glad I found him last night because it rained this morning and he would have been soaking wet. That would not be good. No. So um, he's back. He wants to do show and tell today because we missed show and tell on Friday um, because we were singing happy birthday to Luca. So um, do you want me to do show and tell first? Okay. I will do mine first and then Fluffy will do his and then we'll read a few stories. All right, for my show and tell, da 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 da, I got a new baby animal coloring book. Do you like it? Thank you, I picked this up at Target. Curbside delivery. Um, Super slick, got some groceries, got this new coloring book. If Fluffy, you could help me. It's got all kinds of, oh my goodness, look at, there's a zoo scene. And another zoo scene. I think there's some, there we go, a farm scene. And my favorite part stickers. So there you have it. You could use markers, you could use paint, you could use crayons. I will add it to our collection of coloring books. Oh yeah, you can totally color a picture from here, Fluffy. There's mazes, all kinds of activities. Yep, my friends can also color pictures from the book. I will um, definitely have this available for when they come back. Um, we can all color together. I cannot wait. Okay, Fluffy, what do you have? Oh, Fluffy brought a jack-in-the-box. What? A jack-in-the-box. Well, you don't know what a jack-in-the-box is? <laughs> Fluffy thought this was just a block. No, it looks like a block, but notice the handle on the side. Yeah, that does something pretty cool. Well, you have to turn it to find out. So if you turn that handle round and round, make sure we're going the right way. Wrong way, Fluffy, there we go. Good. Yeah, it plays a little so Well, you gotta keep going. This will take all day. Yes. Well, that's not it. You gotta keep going. Oh, okay. Yep. Not done yet. Still not the end. You gotta keep turning it till something cool happens. Oh, it's okay. Did that startle you? Whoa, Fluffy is like, what? A clown pops up. Yeah, it's called a Jack in the Box. There's the Jack. Pretty cool, huh? I 
I thought so. It also would work as a block, kind of. Um, but good choice, Jack in the Box. All right, Fluffy, why don't you go find something to do? Or you can listen quietly to the stories, but don't go hang out in the backyard, okay? You're too young to be out alone in the yard. Okay, and tell your friends you'll see them tomorrow. Good boy. All righty. Let's see, guys. Let's start with Curious George and the Dinosaur. Jimmy's class was taking a field trip to the museum and George was going along. We're glad to have you, George, said Mr. Chauncey, the teacher, but don't get into trouble. At the museum, Mr. Chauncey began to explain one of the displays. These rocks are millions of years old. The students weren't listening. This is boring, said a student. It sure is, said another. When is lunchtime, asked a third. George wandered off. He didn't find the rocks very interesting either. But in the next room, George saw something very interesting. It was a huge skeleton. What a long tail. It was too much for George to resist. He stepped over the rope and jumped onto the tail. He climbed down, then he climbed up. He climbed up and up until he reached the skeleton's head. Just then Mr. Chauncey and the class came into the room Look at that dinosaur, said Jimmy. And look at George, he shouted. Ride him, George, cried a girl. The guards heard the noise. Get down from there, ordered one of them. I'm going to get the director, said the other. The director is kind of the boss of the museum. George was scared. Is that how they rode dinosaurs in the old days? A girl asked Mr. Chauncey. Well, no, he said. Tell us more about the dinosaurs, someone said. George was curious, what was a dinosaur? Well, said Mr. Chauncey, the earth was once full of huge creatures like this. Suddenly, the, di the director of the museum came charging in. What is this about a monkey on our dinosaur, he asked. Guards, get that monkey down before he causes any damage, he ordered. Poor George. There he was on top of a dinosaur and no place to hide. Just a moment, said Mr. Chauncey. George was a great help to me. He got the children interested in dinosaurs. We wouldn't have listened, said the, a boy. It's so interesting, said another. I want to come back again, said a girl. Well, said the director, I can see that our dinosaur isn't damaged. We'll forgive him this time. You can come down, George, he called. Oh, looks like George just hopped on down. Hooray, the students shouted. Mr. Chauncey said, I have to thank you for making this visit an interesting one, George, but next time promise not to ride the dinosaur. It looks like George shook on it. Deal. When the bus stopped in front of George's house, the man in the yellow hat was waiting. I'm glad to see you, George, he said. I hope you kept out of trouble today. The end. Oh, here's a nice summertime book. Swim, boots, swim. Hope you've all been able to get some swimming in this summer. 
Hola, I'm Dora. I'm going to the beach today. My mommy bought me this bathing suit for the trip. I can't wait to go swimming in the ocean with boots. Will you come too? Great, vamanos, let's go. Boots says he can't come to the ocean with me because he doesn't know how to swim. Don't worry, Boots, my friend Mariana the mermaid can teach you. She's great at swimming and swimming is easy once you know how to do it. Let's head to the beach. Who do we ask for help when we don't know where to go? See, map. Map says we have to go over Flying Fish Bridge and through the silver sand dunes to get to the ocean. We found the Flying Fish Bridge. Whoa, look at all those flying fish. What colors of flying fish do you see? Say them with me. Orange, blue, green, purple. Anarajando, azul, verde, morado. To get across the bridge, we have to duck under the flying fish. Let's count the fish as we go under them. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Muy bien. We made it past the bridge. Now we have to find the silver sand dunes. It's so bright out that I can't see the silver sand dunes. Maybe there's something in backpack to help us see when the sun is too bright. Let's check. Say backpack. Do you see something that will help us see in the bright sun? See sunglasses. Good thinking. We look great in our sunglasses and we found our way to the silver sand dunes maze. Look at all the sand dunes. Help us find our way through the silver sand dunes. Where is the way out? Let's see. Can we go this way? We'll go down. And wow, swiper, let's try this way. Ooh, broken bridge. Gotta go back up. Oh, turtle. Let's go this way. Ah, snake. Let's go back this way. Oh, I think we're getting close. Da, 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 da. Gracias. We made it to the ocean and there's Mariana the mermaid waiting for us. It's time to jump in the water. Let's swim. Vamos a nadar. First, Mariana is going to teach Boots how to go underwater. She says he has to take a deep breath, hold it, and then lower his head under the water. Great job, Boots! Now Mariana holds Boots while he moves his arms in the water. Will you move your arms with him? Great job! Now she's showing him how to kick his legs. Good strong kicks, Boots. Wow, Boots can swim all by himself now. Mariana is a great swimming teacher and Boots is a fast learner. What a fantastic day. I love swimming and now Boots does too. We couldn't have done it without Mariana and you. Thanks for helping. Gracias. The end. Last but not least, how do dinosaurs go to school? read this one already you guys I can't remember it's looking very familiar well we'll read it again how does a dinosaur go to school does he walk does he ride in a busy carpool
Does he drag his long tail? Is he late for the bus? Does he stomp all four feet? Does he make a big fuss? When he gets to the school, does he roughhouse and punch? Does he make a quick grab for a classmate's packed lunch? Does he race up the stairs right ahead of the bell? When the bell rings at your school, that means you're supposed to be in class. The teacher is saying, you're late. Does he interrupt class with his own show and tell? Look at she says, sit down, please. It's not your turn. It's Sally's turn. Does a dinosaur yell? He's very excited because he lost a tooth. And when in the classroom plunked down in his chair, does a dinosaur fidget with his tail in the air? Does he growl during chalk talks or roar out of turn? Does he make it too hard for the others to learn? Does he stir up the classroom by making a noise? Wicked. I think they're giggling because he made a noise like maybe he tooted or burped. Does he tease all the girls? Does he pick on the boys? No. A dinosaur carefully raises his hand. He helps out his classmates with projects they've planned. At recess, he plays with a number of friends and growls at the bullies till the bullying ends. He tidies his desk, then he leaps out the door. Good work, good work, little dinosaur. The... Alrighty, boys and girls. Um, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Love you.